but uh, now we're gonna start covering some SEC matchups, SEC games uh, over the week, and. In our last segment, we're going to talk about uh, LSU Mississippi State, but with this segment right here, I want to talk about uh, Tennessee and Florida, and and what this game represents for the SEC East. Uh, I know throughout the really since the season started, you know, we talked about how Florida is in a rebuilding class and how they're starting to rebuild their culture and their program. So, not we shouldn't expect too much out of them, but. Man, this man, they 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 show that they might be a year or two early with the uh, with the way these guys these guys played against Tennessee. I mean, they completely shut down the offense of Tennessee, um, limiting limiting them to just nine points in the second half. Um, uh, Joe Milton of Tennessee went twenty and thirty four with two hundred eighty seven yards, two touchdowns, and an interception. Um, and the Florida. Offense wasn't particularly much better, but you know, Graham Mertz went 19 24, 166 yards and a touchdown. But the 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 rushing attack of Florida was tr- tremendous. Trevor Etienne had 23 carries, 172 yards and a touchdown. And Montreal Johnson Jr. had 12 carries, 23 yards and a touchdown. Uh, so, because Florida did a great job of running the ball, they did a great job of controlling the clock and controlling the time of possession which limited scoring opportunities for Tennessee, which means that Tennessee was never able to really get in a rhythm. You could tell they looked flustered with the number of false starts and flags they generated on offense. And and Florida was also able to generate a lot of pressure on the defensive side of the ball. You know, they, um, they had, you know, they only had one sack. They had a lot of pressures, a lot of QB rushes. And... It was uh, it was uh, it was honestly more so great great Florida as opposed to poor um, play on the side of Tennessee, and you know this is uh, this was interesting to watch because what does this mean for the SEC um, in terms of the, the play the teams that we thought would be great, you know we talk about the LSU's and the Alabamas and the Georgia the Georgia another team that struggled. Uh, last week against South Carolina, though that's the team I'm the least I'm least worried about because that was more so a matter of just you know being so dominant for so long and then you just have a mental last, but they still managed to win the game. But this right here, man, um, you know this, wow, I and yes, this game wasn't was in Florida, but uh, you know Tennessee they looked they looked out of sorts. Uh, on offensive end and the interior struggled surprisingly a team that normally has is able to generate a lot of pressure inside they weren't able to generate a lot of pressure and they weren't able to stop the run with their linebackers um, and they were they just weren't able to get Florida's offense off the field and Florida was in no rush to score the ball um, they were fully committed to the run because that's their bread and butter and and Florida's game plan which is control the clock and run the ball and you want to win the game that way. That's what they did, and it worked for them. Uh, but let me know what you guys think as well. What did you guys see from this game? What was your guys' biggest takeaways from this Florida-Tennessee matchup? What's this more good Florida or is this more bad Tennessee? And is Florida now, should they be considered one of the top teams in the SEC? And how far should, how far should Tennessee fall after losing this game? Um, you know, I don't want to read too much into this, but... I think it's more so Florida is much better than we expected them to be, as opposed to Tennessee being just not as good as we thought. I think Tennessee still is a good team, um, but it just shows. I think this shows there is there is more talent than we thought in the SEC, and it's not as top heavy as we thought it once was. Um, but moving forward, Tennessee will have to do a much better job of creating pressure on the interior, specifically with their linebackers. Um, and they're gonna have to get more, m- much more productivity uh, out of their rushing attack from Jalen Wright and Javari Small because 63 yards and 35 yards aren't gonna cut it. Total 100 yards rushing, that's not gonna cut it. Um, because teams are starting to hone in on the passing attack of Tennessee. They're just starting to drop back in coverage because they say, "Listen, we know you can't run the ball, so let's just you know throw an extra nickel on for the secondary because." 
we're not worried about you running the ball. So um, that is what Tennessee is going to have to fix moving forward. In Florida, uh, they're going to have to be show more diversity in terms of their offense and being able to pass the ball when necessary because that's something that they struggled with. Um, and that's what they're going to have to you know fix moving forward. But I think this is more so a matter of good Florida as opposed to bad Tennessee. But still an uh, interesting representation of where the SEC is moving nonetheless. Um, so it'll be exciting to see moving forward how that goes. But, um, guys, yeah, so that's my takeaways from Tennessee Florida. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Um, but with that being said, in our final segment of the show today, guys, we're going to be covering LSU and Mississippi State. Um, Jaden Daniels is he back in a Heisman conversation after his performance. Uh, we're going to be covering all of that and then some guys, so be sure to stick around. You are not going to miss it. <laughs> 